Good day everyone, uh, Nick Bowditch again. Um, today I want to talk very quickly about something that's come up in the last two days with two separate clients, um, both of which said to me and wanted some advice around the feeling they were having that they weren't legit and that someone would find out and you know they'd be ruined and whatever because someone, everyone would know that they were just bullshitting their way through or they were a fraud or, or whatever. And and they're like, you know, you probably don't can't relate to this at all. And I'm sitting there thinking, I relate to that 100%. And, and I know now that, you know, that's called imposter syndrome or fraud syndrome or whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. But everybody who has any kind of public profile, uh, who's a writer, who's an opinion giver, who's a commentator, uh, you know, an author or whatever, everyone who's producing content, particularly online content, has a little bit of that in them where where you know we we uh we write something down or we make a video and then you think ah oh, shit there's gonna be someone out there who's gonna go what a wanker like this is the thing this is why he's wrong these are 10 there's 10 reasons why he's wrong uh you know whatever it might be and and so you you do doubt yourself and you think geez you know like if anybody actually ever finds out that i haven't got a clue what i'm doing then i'm done you know and and so I think, and I tried to say to these clients, you know, that everybody goes through it, but I've, I've sort of asked a few people around this morning and, and, and it's a similar theme around small business, especially, and, and startup, especially, you know, because everybody wants to be Elon Musk or have Snapchat as their business, their startup or whatever, and, and they're not all that, you know, so sometimes you are an also ran, sometimes you are just making up the numbers, sometimes your idea sucks, but you've got to sell it. And you've got to make sure that you know the, the market sees you as a credible public figure, a credible um, you know expert in whatever you're trying to sell. And, and if that little voice in your head is saying, actually, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about, and they probably know it, or they're going to find out soon, that's kind of terrifying, right? So, what I want to do today is just go really quickly through a few things that help me deal with it, because um, I feel it every day. You know, I, 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 every day I feel like somebody is going to you know, find me out or I'm, I'm getting a bit too big for my boots or, or whatever it might be. So these are the things that help me, right? The first thing is I, I don't try to be perfect. I, I just try to be valuable. You know, there's a big difference and, and done is better than perfect. You know, I bang on about that all the time. But all I'm trying to be is valuable and to bring value to somebody who consumes my content at some stage in their life or in their business life will get some value from what I'm producing, right? It's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be polished, it's not gonna be TV quality or TVC quality or anything else, it might be just Facebook Live like this, but you know, it's going to be valuable hopefully, but I don't strive for perfection. And I think as soon as you do, you try to, you know, you're treading a very slippery pole. So I just try to be valuable, not perfect. Second thing is I try not to compare myself to anyone else, right? Which of course I do a hundred times a day, and so do you, right? You compare me and all of all of us who are doing this sort of content to each other. That's just how it is, you know. But I, I actively and mindfully try not to do that because you know, really nobody else is nobody else is doing what I do exactly the way I do it. And that's the same of all of you as well. You know, you might be competing in a market that has 1,000 similar products to you or 1,000 similar businesses, but nobody does it exactly the way you do it because you're the unique denominator, right? So stop trying to compare yourself to everyone else and then other people will stop trying to compare you to other people as well, right? Because that's the first way to make yourself think, oh shit, they're heaps better than me or they're heaps cheaper or they're heaps smarter or they're heaps better looking or they're heaps skinnier or whatever bullshit we tell ourselves, right? The third thing is, and this is gonna seem really narcissistic, but I keep a little file, a little collection of the nice things people say about me. Um, it's not like a scrapbook that, I, that feeds my ego. It's more like when I'm feeling like, oh, geez, you know, uh, um, I don't think I'm doing a very good job or I don't think I'm helping or I don't think I'm an expert or I don't think I'm whatever. I just have a look through my Facebook page, especially at the, at the comments and stuff like that and, and uh, you know, interactions and messages people send me that are really nice. And it, and it does make you feel really nice and it makes you feel less like an imposter and more like you're adding value and, and being helpful. And it strokes your ego, right? But it strokes your ego in a nice way. 
not in a, I already feel I'm awesome and now I'm going to feel like I'm, you know, the duck's nuts. It's just like I'm feeling a bit crap, but that makes me feel a bit better and less of an imposter, right? The fourth thing, and I, I suffer from this uh, pretty badly sometimes, is try not to take yourself too seriously. You know, like, sometimes my, my ego and my narcissistic streak can get away from me. And, and you know, when you, when you speak to rooms, when you go to a conference and you speak and you do a keynote and there's 2,000 people in the room, you, you kind of do feel like Bono, right? For, for, even for that split second until you get hold of yourself and you realize you're, you're a tool. But, you know, you do feel kind of serious and important and, you know, and let's face it, I'm not curing cancer, Right, I'm not. I'm not ending world poverty. Uh, like all, all I'm doing is this. I just, I just try and help. I just try and add value to people, particularly start up and small business people. I just try to to make people think about kindness where they mightn't have before. Right, it's not super serious. It's not going to save lives or anything. So I, sometimes I have to just, you know, kind of take an inward look at myself and and realize you're being a bit of a wanker. Like calm down. And sometimes that helps with the imposter syndrome as well. The fifth thing is, I, I there's something that kind of really annoys me is when people say to me, "Oh, geez, you've been lucky. Geez, you're lucky, you know, to have to have worked at Facebook and Twitter, or to have had startups that you sold, or to have you know to do what you do, you know, to travel and, and speak and people listen to you and whatever. You're really lucky, you know." And I think, "Fuck off! I'm not lucky. Like, uh, it's fortunate. That there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of fortune I've had, and I'm really grateful for it." There's a lot of gratitude that goes with that, but it's not luck. You know, luck wasn't when, when my wife and I had zero money and no prospects, and, I, and we both worked our asses off so that we have made ourselves, a, 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 given ourselves a chance and put ourselves in a situation where now we can enjoy something good. That's not luck, right? So, so sometimes I think with the imposter thing, you can think, oh, geez, I'm too lucky. You know, I've, I've won a lot, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And, if you've worked hard to get to you are, you should you should own that. You should embrace it, right? And and anyone who gives you that sort of shit, just cut them loose. You know that they're just they're just projecting their crap onto you. It's not luck. It's fortune, and fortune is something to be grateful for. But it's but it's not luck. And then the last thing I would tell you is <laughs> something someone told me uh, once. A very wise man told me once uh, that nobody is no, nobody knows what they're doing, right? So so nobody. Like, you just go for it. Like, even if you are an imposter, if you are actually providing value and if you are actually connecting with people who care about what you say and, and they're changing their life or their family's life or their business or their community or, or their culture or whatever it is because of something you're doing, then fuck that. Just go for it, right? Because nobody knows what they're doing anyway. So, you know, the, the more people that don't know what they're doing, the less people are going to find you out. So, you know, if you are providing value, if you're being a good person, if you're spreading kindness, how can you go wrong, right? Just, just go for it. And, you know, let, let the critics sort themselves out and let, let the world sort themselves out. All you've got to do is make sure your place in the world is solid and good and legit and kind. And I think, you know, imposter or not, we can do with a lot more people like that. So, I hope you're having a ripper Thursday, wherever you are. Maybe it's Wednesday where you are, but... It's Thursday here in Australia. Um, please, again, if you wouldn't mind, if you want to share this, that'd be great. If you feel like people in your network would get some value from it. Um, if you are an imposter and if you want to out yourself as an imposter as I have, I'd love to hear that in the comments as well. But uh, I hope you have a really good day. Be kind to yourselves and, and find your kindness. Um, and I'll see you next time. See ya.